Hello and welcome to Stefan's Bilderwelt. This will be my first tutorial for HitFilm Pro. There has been a question in the forum about the freeze frame effect and how to achieve it. In this tutorial I would like to show you how it is done and it's very easy to do. If you like it, please leave a comment, put the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Have fun! In HitFilm I created a standard project. I imported the media I would like to use and I just drag it down to the timeline. Okay, we make ourselves some space and try to bring the audio down as we don't need it for this tutorial. So I skip forward a few frames and find the frame I would like to use. Moving up to the right corner and export the frame, give it a good name and use also the time code. So in this case it's 230, so I just include the time code. Also I will use the blade, press C or select the slice tool and make a slice just where you exported the frame. I will repeat the steps for the next few frames, so I go a little bit further and find another good spot. I think that's just fine. Again, moving up to the right corner, options, export fame, frame. Again, frame and use the timecode, in this case 718. Press C for the slice tool, make a slice, move forward to find the last frame. Again, export and use the time code. The time code will be very helpful if you use a lot of frames or on a bigger timeline so you can find easily the spot you are looking for afterwards. Okay, with the slice tool I made again a cut. Next step is to import the frame, so import media, find the frames, select them all and open. So the last frame will be on the top because it starts with a one, so I just drag it down to the timeline and repeat this with the other frames. If you did not use the slice tool, then you have to find the right points with the time. So that's finished. Now I will expand the tracks a little bit or the, the frames and try to bring this one upwards. So I make the frame a little bit longer so it will move into the next frame. Okay, for the last frame I will do a right click on the track 4 and insert another track. So this will be track 5. I make track 4 a little bit longer and bring the last frame to the very end of the clip. So now we have all the still frames inside our editor. Next is select the first frame and make a composite shot. Press OK. Now we can do as well a proxy so the frame will render while we are working. So I zoom in a little bit. This is not so easy with the magic mouse from Apple. So if it doesn't work well for you, you just use 100% with the hand tool you can move the picture so select the frame and select the Bessier tool for a mask. Now you have to mask your actor out of the whole thing or out of the frame so you have to be a little bit accurate to get around her nicely. So I will speed this up a little bit.
So, closing the mask and there she is. So in the controls I will use the shape and the feather strength and bring it up a little bit. So just four pixels. And I repeat all those steps for the next frame. So if you go back to the editor, you can see this works very well already. So again, just make the same thing for the next frames. Okay, I finished the masking back in the timeline. It should look something like that now. So back to the first frame and we have a quick look. Works very well. So if you want to, you can stop now or you can go further in putting in some effects. So we, we are not doing something very special, just some simple things. So in the first composite shot, I will bring the scale down to fit. In the effects browser, I will find particles and simulation and we use the atomic particle effect. Bring it down to the effects, open it up. And as you see, the, the frame is a little bit, yeah, it's not looking so nice. So I have to increase the particles. So number of particles, bring it all up to the right and she looks nice again. Next thing is I want to find the right point where we want to start. So I will go for four seconds in the fractal. We can have a look here. So with the displays strengths, it will look something like this. And with the disperse, I have this nice transition. So I would like to use this. I set a keyframe by pressing the circle. Bring the slider back to the last frame. If you can't see anything, just use this little arrow and back to the last frame. Increase the disperse strength and there you go. Closing down this folder, copy move into the second composite shot and paste inside the effects folder. Do the same thing at the last. So if we play the last one, you will recognize that nothing is happening. Why is that? Very easy. This frame has been a little bit shorter. So that's the reason why. So in the timeline, I will look for the fractal and there is the disperse strength. So there are no keyframes. So in the inside the controls, I will reset the disperse strengths and set a new keyframe just somewhere yeah, close to the end. Keyframe, bring it to the very end, last frame and increase the disperse strengths again. Okay, right click on the keyframe, interpolation smooth, select all keyframes in the next shot, right click, interpolation smooth, and on the first one, the same thing. I have to find them, select them all, right click on one, and ready. Back inside the editor, we can have a look how it looks like. So bring it back to the first frame. And as we did the proxy for every composite shot, it will render quite fast in the background. So when we play it through, we will see that the effect is looking quite good. There you go. Okay, I changed the view to the editor. Clicking on this line, Holding command, I create a keyframe. I create a second one and bring this one to the very left corner. And do the same thing at the end. Command left click, creating a keyframe. Always create a keyframe somewhere inside the frame and then bring it to the very end. For now, drag those keyframes upwards. Uh, this, this magic mouse not working well. So command set. So I bring up those keyframes and 
the layers perfectly faded in and out. Just repeat this for the other frames. So command left click creating the keyframes. Do the same thing on the last one. And drag the first ones always to the corner and those upwards. So far so good. I will now clean up my browser a little bit, create a new folder and yeah, give it a name. I call it comp1. Click the first one, hold shift and click the last one and drag it into this folder. So we have a clean browser again. So now as I would like to do a color grade, I export the editor or the timeline. I use the ProRes 422. That's fine and just export. So the export has been finished. I will re-import the clip. And there are two ways now to do the color grading. First, you could just use the clip. You just export it, delete all the clips in the timeline and put the comp one clip inside the timeline and do the color grading. That's what I did because I'm a little bit lazy. So the second version would be select each clip and do the color grading on each clip. Yeah, this will be very helpful if you want to achieve different looks. But as I said, in my case, I just used the one single clip and this makes life a little bit easier. Okay, I hope you liked the first tutorial. It was my first English tutorial for a long time. So I hope you could understand everything. It was not too bad. Okay, if you have questions, please ask them in the comments below. And if you like it, share it. Okay, thanks for watching. Have fun and bye.